to get some uh, bad stuff. And then I participated in Google Summer of Code 2009, uh, which was a really great time, which gave me the possibility to uh, develop uh, some really cool stuff, class stuff. Uh, end of 2009, I joined the Hamina project. And um, in the beginning of 2010, um, I got a bachelor student who was working on, on a new uh, core for the class of Hamipod. Uh, we called it uh, the cluster of NG, next generation. It's a Java core. Uh, we'll if, you know, explain later a, little, a bit more detail. And possible, possible we have a GSARC student uh, in 2011. Maybe if you're interested, you can just uh, talk to me. Okay, project goals. Uh, first of all, have a powerful web application honeypot. Collecting a lot of attacks, what we are actually doing. We have in our central uh, database around <coughs> 4 million unique uh, IP request combinations. So there's a lot of stuff going on in around one year of collecting attacks. And yeah, fighting cyber threats, mostly script keys. Um, okay, introducing the class of Honeypot. Um, I will start with a short overview of you about our motivation. Then I will show you the architecture of our report. I will explain the dynamic dog list, which is the uh, separate part of the honeypot. And then I will show you how we just uh, we, um, set up the honeypot and uh, finish with the class of engine. Uh, our motiv motivation was uh, I noticed a lot of attacks against the um, Previous develop, developed uh, web application honeypots, but um, I had some problems with those honeypots because I like to extend them, and uh, extending with, uh, those old honeypots means uh, you have to write static templates for uh, common used uh, web applications, which is uh, really a lot of work, and it. Uh, yeah. I, w I wasn't sure if it's uh, efficient, so. This was one point because I, uh, which was a good reason for me to start this project. Um, web applications are, um, you put a lot of trust into web applications. If you uh, browse Google, you don't expect to be infected. So if you browse to a website, website, you don't expect that there's something going on in the background, which is malicious. And another point is, uh, compromised web servers are, are very powerful. Uh, for example, um, imagine a, a, a botnet existing out of uh, web servers. So this is not a, a, a usual client which uh, comes up maybe in the evening for a couple of hours. This is a web server running 24-7 with a, a much bigger bandwidth than a, string, a simple home box. Okay, let's look at the architecture. It's uh, very simple. There's an incoming event, which means a request from an uh, attacker. We have a vulnerability emulator, which is simply just uh, looking at the injected files, looking for some echoes, uh, which uh, produce some uh, feedback for the attacker and uh, put that in the reply. Uh, we collect the data which gets injected, uh, put it in a database, store the files, and reply to the attacker. So very basic, very simple. Uh, yeah, I already, had, I already talked about uh, previous uh, approaches, which was static templates, or maybe some uh, application setup, which used to, to be a honeypot with some logging infrastructure. And then we started to have a new approach, which is the um, dynamic dog list, which is simply um, you take an attack, which is coming in, or we show you on the next slide. Okay, we have this attack. The victim.com is our honeypot. Uh, vulnerable.php is our vulnerable PHP file. There are some parameters that's injected file called the uh, bad.txt. So this is the attack. We take the door, which is in this case the vulnerable.php, and place it on a list on our uh, index page. Then uh, a search robot comes by, draws our page, puts uh, the dog in this um, uh, in his uh, log. And if the attacker um, Googles for this uh, dog, in, 
this case in URL dot vulnerable dot PHP. Our honeypot shows up in the search result and he probably attacks the honeypot. So this is the basic principle of the honeypot. And we um, notice this that if an attacker finds us, he not simply um, tries this one attack which he has uh, looked for with, uh, for example, Google, uh, but uh, he looks for, let's say, 100 different types of attacks and uh, vulnerability, vulnerabilities, and maybe some of those attacks are not in our database. So we just simply take those unknown attacks and add them to our list, uh, which leads to a self-extending uh, attack surface. I can show you the surface. Basically, this is my honeypot. It's just a, a development version, so it's, there's not that many dogs. But you can see this honeypot runs for, let's say, a week. And okay, there's a lot of crap, but there's something going on. Okay, distributed setup. Uh, we use uh, lots of domains pointing to our honeypots. Um, we have a central database to store all attacks from different honeypots in a central place. Uh, we use HD access um, redirects to redirect malicious uh, requests from normal web application, for example, uh, WordPress instances to, uh, to our honeypots. Uh, we use visit invisible links to uh, improve our search rank from, from our honeypots, and we use the WordPress plugin uh, to serve as a simple sort of uh, dog list to, to attract attacks and redirect to our honeypot. Stuff we collect, uh, we collect, collect so-called ID files. ID files are used to uh, check if a system is vulnerable. They just, is, um, is, is this is just a simple PHP file with some echoes giving back some information to the attacker. Uh, we collect spreaders, DDoS bots, uh, shells, vectors, drive-by kits, and a lot of stuff. Uh, okay. Sorry. Class of NG, our new uh, Honeypot core is written in Java. Uh, it's the same approach, but with a different uh, kind of implementation. Uh, it uh, provides much more modular modularity, which means that you can write plugins in many different kinds of scripting languages, for example, Python, uh, obviously Java, um, Ruby, whatever you want. Uh, it's a, it has a lightweight XML configuration and rule set, and currently we are working on port modules from our old cluster of version to the new cluster of NG. Uh, yeah, we are also analyzing some of the ejected files. Um, some of them are um, PHP or CurlBots, and we see um, honey uh, botnets with sites from around 10 to 1,000 bots in one botnet. Uh, we are using PHP sandbox, for example, the uh, Pikachu sandbox from Malaysian guys. Guys, um, I use the Python IRC client to um, to um, monitor those botnets. Um, maybe we are using in the future Hail, the new. Um, but it more monetary tool from last year's GSOC. Okay, let's have some action. Um, okay, I hope you stood up. This is a, a live feed from the glass top. See, is there something interesting here? You see robots.txt, well, probably a search engine coming by. Um, there's we have. Uh, Come simple board. This may be, uh, I think it's uh, Yomla or Nambu. What else we have? Yeah, another Yomla. Some uh, virtual market, whatever. More Nambu stuff. Maybe it's. This slide here. So there's not that much going on, but um, maybe some remote uh, local file inclusion. One single domain. 
Uh, this is just now, uh, I think, two hours. Here, here we have some uh, local planning tools. And maybe you see the bottom. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Typical local fire inclusion environment. Okay. What else? Um, I just uh, downloaded a couple of minutes before uh, an injected ID file. As you can see, there's uh, in the top there's a function used to convert uh, bytes into megabyte or gigabyte. They use uh, some uh, functions they are called to uh, get the total free disk space, maybe to get an idea about what type of uh, machine, machine they are on. Here, down there you can see the echo commands to get the information from the infected machine. Um, here we have the spreader. They are using some uh, some brute force type of um, <coughs> approach to get the um, actual bot. Here you can see a bot. Uh, it's a basic uh, functionality like uh, DDoS brand. Uh, here you can see the IRC control server. Uh, you can see, no, not in this one, maybe some others. Here you can see the um, key and password to control the botnet in clear text in the file. So you can just simply go on this IRC channel, use the key, use the password to control the whole botnet. Um, talking about botnets here, I have an IRC session on one of those botnets. Uh, as you can see, there are around 100 15 uh, clients in this botnet. And still keep in mind, those are not the home boxes, those are web servers. So this is a much more powerful botnet than a regular botnet. Okay. Ah, something else. Okay. I showed you the ID file, spreader file, and the bot. And they are all hosted on this website which is uh, obviously a benign website. So they get hot, got hacked and the files stored somewhere in there uh, on their file system. Okay, any questions? Yeah. Uh, I know Google blacklists certain search terms for vulnerable websites to kind of prevent Google hacking. Does that limit your uh, visibility of your honeypot anyway? I don't think so. Because I basically they use this uh, in URL uh, advanced search term to look for vulnerable uh, PHP files. So and you can't both put the DOS request. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank all our uh, speakers, Christian, Mr. Lowe, Ben, and the and Lucas, of course. Um, and if I was to say there's hot coffee behind here, which will all brush up to 